Official Strongman Games, event three, axle deadlift. So the, the, the athlete will deadlift an axle for max reps within 60 seconds. So we head to head, total reps is your score. Athlete begins on the starting line. Athlete must wait for judges down command to receive a good rep. Touch and go not allowed. You must wait for the judges up command after the bar and tyres tire, have settled. The athlete will lift a platform that the lift from a platform that makes the four meter axle bar standard height, even with tires on the sides. No deadlift suits, hooks, tacky, or tack towels allowed. So deadlift from normal height, Tom, but it will be on tack, obviously on tires, which I think I think the tires set up will only really affect the people going for like high reps above 10 reps on it you know like having to wait for this the weight to settle and stuff so to, to talk to us about about axle deadlift compared to uh normal deadlift what what are the things just to... sorry go one, one one step back you don't do you think they did you say they won't bounce you say they or do you think they will there'll be a bit of play with them well i would assume that if they're if they're on if they're on tires and not like the kind of metal wheels i, I would assume that they're going to they're not going to settle as well. I, I, in my, my experience, mm. they're going to, they're going to, you're going to be able to do yeah. your fast eccentric, and then it might shuffle you to the right or shuffle you to the left or pull you forward or whatever. Um, mm. So just a thing to be aware. Of. You, you, you see some people who are like dead set on right. I'm going for, I'm going for twelve reps on this. I can do whatever weight for twelve reps. And then they used to, whatever their training set up, you know, like say the typical one that a lot of people use, where they'll use a bumper and then a metal plate or whatever, and it kind of kills it on a on a decent platform. It kills it so you can, uh, yeah. well, you see a lot, a lot of the a lot of the American guys using like say the 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 metal plates, and it just it's just dead straight away. So yeah. it, it's really suited suited for kind of going into that kind of next rep, isn't it? Um, but I, I think that's a minor thing, to be honest. Um, but yeah, t t well, no, I, I let's touch on it real quick. I, I actually think it's an important thing to be, at least be aware of and cognize enough because the, the rubber's going to bounce. I believe I've done comps before where they've even deflated them ever so slightly, but it still went side to side. So a lot of the time, I will con I will get my guys to do a little bit of tempo work because if you're able to control it, I'm not saying you know, eight seconds down, five seconds down. But if you can yeah. take it as a, take a little bit of the speed out of the eccentric, it's going to bounce less. You can get into your set position. You're going to get a quicker call. Um, otherwise, as it hits, you have to wait for it to stop. And then you will have to shuffle your feet left and right an inch or two. And an inch or two makes a difference, especially with some of the weights. I mean, what, what's the 90 kilo guys? 277 for reps. I mean, I never had to do that at under 90. The most we did for reps, I think, uh, off the standard was, was 250. Um, so it's you know the weight the rate the weights are up there now. So I, I would be cognizant of that. I would look to control and push. Did they say suits are allowed or suits are off? Suits no are off, suits. No suits that's raw, which is cool. But I would be looking to try and make my eccentric look like my concentric instead of the classic deadlift. And then you know how you drop, you can get your knees yeah. back in. I would try and look look uh, make them look identical up and down. Um, with regards to the axle, there's no slack anymore. Okay, so you can't, you need to get tight, but you don't take any slack out of the bar. Predominantly, what I've seen, the people who have done best with axle deadlift for reps, they're not necessarily the best deadlifters. They're good deadlifters, but they're also good squatters. I find leg drive is, uh, is, is a big key uh, with the axle deadlift. Um, what about your experiences with, with axle deadlift and, and good assistance movements or good technique tips? So I think that it, I, did, I, did, I put something on my story the other day about um, comparing on Instagram about comparing like a deadlift bar to um, to like a stiffer bar compared to an axle, and I feel and that I haven't seen it written down. You might you might be able to confirm it or tell me you think I'm wrong, but like I I, I kind of noticed that the 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 less give there is in a bar, the more give there is in a bar the the kind of lower the hip position you can afford because when you when you like take you imagine like a deadlift bar with a load of bumper plates on you can think when when you take all the weight you you're getting that bit of give off the floor so you can kind of afford yourself to to to, to start with the lower hips and uh, get more leg drive whatever but if you tried to do that with like say a stiffer bar or an axle and you tried to drop your hips like you see it's so so 
so common, Tom, don't you, where people try and drop the hip so low to get leg drive, and then they mm-hmm. just get spat out, and the, the hips shoot up, and then back uh, round forward, the, the bar path goes forward. So I find that, obviously, the, the, the axle is, like, the, the least forgiving of it, of any kind of bar because obviously even if you've got the stiffest barbell if, if it's as stiff as the stiffest no sorry it's the same stiffness as the barbell you've got to consider the fact that the the diameter of it is is making it an ever so slight deficit for a lot of people and ever so slightly out in front so not only have you got this kind of the the that bit of give that you that it's just you're not getting off the floor especially with being uh, unsuited as well uh, because you're not getting that assistance off the floor. I find that people, a lot of people may find that starting with an ever so slightly higher hip position than usual, they may have a better chance of being able to maintain that same position as they lift the bar off the floor and less chance of being spat out. Does that make any sense, Tom, what I just said to you? Yeah, yeah. No, perfect, perfect sense, perfect sense. Um, just looking through the event rules and you've got the athlete beginning at starting line. So I'd have my my athletes practice that. Um, I assume that means that they're starting a meter or two meters back and they have to run strap on and then go. Um, I've seen them do this before at the official strongman games. Is, do you think that's the case? Yeah, that's, well, that's what it was at the dead. That's what it was at the deadlift like there uh, mm. last year, wasn't it? The, um, the start of the line and I, I would imagine it. Does it say, does it say, does it say in the rules that it is? Or so it says athlete begins at a starting line. That is going uh, to make me assume they're not. Yeah, they're not starting with straps on the bar. I honestly don't care for that because I don't think it trains a strength quality or tests a strength quality. Yeah, but the I, rules are the rules are the rules, and you're going to have to practice that small element. Yeah, and I can see it be. It, you can see the the um, the rationale. The rationale will be like rewarding you if you kind of do, do it strapless. Like you can just go, go and dip and rip if anybody does. Um, and then if you're using your Y straps, you'll probably be a little bit quicker than guys getting in with figure of, figure of eights, maybe. Um, so kind of rewarding that continuum. Or maybe we'll, I'm just looking too far into it. Um, but yeah, that, that that's a that's a thing to consider. If you if if like say you haven't trained tra- trained Axel for a little while, um, and you just starting a new training phase in terms of in, in terms of technique you don't really know what to expect just pl- play around with a uh, d- different start position because i suspect that if you're kind of like i've said dropping you dropping your hips like you would in a in a in a suit on a deadlift bar i suspect that a lot of people train that technique with an axle bar you're just going to get mauled and you're just going to get pulled all over the place so um yeah so t- tom you said the the um about the about getting your squat strength up so i i i, I find that doing uh, I, I find that like say doing doing stuff like say hin, hingy box squats or like say pin pin squats low like a hip dominant variation of a squat basically um yep. I, I think that would be like dead 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 stop or even like say doing doing stuff like um i had a play around the other day doing just for just for the sake of saving time where where i was we're doing like an anderson squat with a with a yoke just so it didn't take long to set up and that that kind of thing and i was and i was envisaging that i was doing the like the deadlift start position if you will and and copying that but um but yeah get like everybody trains deadlift well what generally like every like there's a lot of people that seem to be uh freakishly good at deadlifting now so a lot of people are doing the doing the right thing um i would say that if, if it is new to you like a, a protocol that that I, that I like is is doing like something like say as a secondary session doing like 10 10 to 15 sets of three to five with say starting at around 40 percent of your max 40 50 percent and you'll just be able to find out find out a lot like what i've just said about the the uh, like said about the 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 start position in terms of your hips you might find that your your foot stance may change um where where you where your feet are compared to um 
because where you're going to be taking that tension, your body is going to be, your body's going to be in a different position than if you've been putting on a deadlift bar. And just like it, just these kind of micro kind of adjustments in terms of start positions can make, can make such a drastic difference in terms of force production. Um, like, look, like I, as I'm experiencing at the minute, like say anything just below the knee, I feel really strong. But then I go like a couple of inches below and I'm like, I'm struggling with 100 kilos. Like, so comparing an axle to like a deadlift bar with a lot of flex, it can be, it, it can be, it might only be small, but it could be significant for a lot of people. So I would say like, like practice and explore, like be open-minded that your start position may be, may be slightly different. Play around with a slightly higher hip. Mm -hmm. 